Today I'm going to start uh, playing around with my arcade controllers here. So basically, uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to get out one of the uh, boards and some of the wires and hook just a button and maybe one of the joysticks up to it, plug it into my computer through USB and see if it works like it's supposed to. First things first, let's look at this uh, controller board here. Uh, so there were really no instructions that I saw other than wiring of the button side of things because there are two styles of buttons that should be pretty straightforward um, so this is the board here and if we flip it over you can see it says USB and it says LED joystick and it says CY822B so I'm going to do a Google image ser search on that and see if I can get the uh, pin out although it should be pretty self-explanatory uh, because there are pins with three pins, two pins and over here I think the only things that are confusing are this one and this one. One of them is going to be, whoops, sorry, this one and this one. Uh, one's going to be the USB, one's going to be the joystick. They look like they're the same connection. They both have five pins. So that's my only real question. And it might even say it on the board here. No, not really. But let's get a pin out online and see what we can figure out. Okay, so all I did was type in CY822B at uh, Google and then clicked on images. This is like the first image that came up. I know you probably can't see it too well on the camera, but it says here, this is the USB cable. This one's for the uh, joystick. Uh, and then there's uh, two pin joysticks. So I guess the joysticks also connects here. Um, and then these are LED powered uh, push buttons on the side here. And they're labeled, they're also labeled on the board K1, K2, K3, uh, K4, L2, R2, L2, R1, that's where there's two L2s. Anyway, so I should be able to figure it out just by plugging things in. There's also other buttons up here, uh, mode, turbo, clear, auto, and then uh, these joystick ones are up, down, right, and left. And then there's a 5 volt over here It says external LED uh, interface, the joystick LED light. So I guess there's a pin there for that. So let's go ahead and start playing around with this. First off, let's just touch, hook up one of the push buttons and the USB cable and go give that a try on the computer. So I'll take this out here. So again, uh, I also have, this is from, I ordered a while ago. These ones are a little bit cheaper. This one just has two connections on it because it's just a push button. But since this set has LED lights, there's four pins on the bottom. So let's go ahead. I'm going to look at this picture here that came with the kit to see what wires go where and then I'll plug that into the board. Hooked that button all up with the four wires. I just put it in the first push button uh, pin which is labeled K1. Now I'll take the USB cable that this came with and plug it in. Of course these plugs have little clips on them so they can only go in one way so you don't put them in backwards. Now I'm just going to go plug this in and theoretically since this is just a generic uh, keyboard board um, not keyboard board, uh, joystick board, game controller board. It should show up as a generic game controller on my computer. I shouldn't have to install anything. So let's give that a try. Okay, going to plug this into USB. Right away you see on the board here an LED light lighting up. Now uh, the uh, button's supposed to have LED lights. Uh, it seems like when it only lights up when you press it. Uh, which I was hoping they'd be lit up all the time, but that's also pretty cool. So when you hit the keys, they light up. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at the software and make sure the computer's detecting the board and the presses. Okay, so I mentioned earlier this is a generic keyboard, or, sorry, gamepad. Uh, so you shouldn't have to install anything. That's as far as drivers. Obviously, you need generic game, uh, joystick drivers installed, but most Linux systems are going to have those installed. Actually, most operating systems in general are going to have those installed already unless you have a very, very uh, stripped down system. Uh, but to test the key, uh, the joystick, uh, we'll have to install some software. If it's not already installed, it might be on your system already, but if we do sudo apt-get install joystick, it will install that package, which I already have installed. And uh, next, we can use the uh, J scale, so, or sorry, J cal uh, command. So, if you only have one key, uh, joystick hooked up, it's going to be under dev input JS0. If you have two, the second one would be JS1, so forth and so on. And actually, before we do that, let's go ahead and run USB list 
I'm sorry, LS USB. And you can see all my USB devices. And this one right here, if you can read that through the camera, says Dragon Rise Incorporated PC Twin Shock Gamepad. So that's one way to detect. So it seems to be detecting that. See, if I was to unplug the board, I'll unplug the board. I'll clear the screen and run that command again. You can see that doesn't show up in the list. So I'll plug it back in. I'll clear the screen and run that again. LS USB, and it shows up right there. Um, another thing you can do is list, and I'm showing you this in the shell just because this is the way I prefer to do it. Obviously, there's GUI applications for this, but uh, list dev um, inputs. So this will list all inputs from your machine by dash, we'll say ID. And so that will list all input devices. So you can see my mouse and keyboard listed here. And you can also see the Dragon Rise uh, Incorporated USB joystick listed twice because it has different uh, functions, but that's just one device there. And you can see it says generic USB joystick. So let's go ahead and uh, we will focus this a little bit. There we go. Uh, we will now run the calibration test. And this is, I'm just running this just to make sure that I get uh, inputs from that device. There's different ways you can do this, but I, again, I, I'll just say jscal-c for calibrate, and I will get the um, device, which in this case is dev slash input dash, or sorry, slash js0. I'll hit enter. Now, the first part of this is trying to calibrate the actual joystick, which I don't have hooked up. I'm just going to Wait here, I'm going to click the button. There we go. Now, if we look down at the bottom of the screen here, now we're calibrating the buttons. And you can see I'm pressing the button. And as I press the button, I'll bring this up here so you can see this too. As I press the button, it's detecting key presses. Now, I'm calibrating it all wrong because I'm only pressing one button for everything. But I know that it's getting a signal. So it is working, which is great. Let's go ahead and hook up the joystick. Okay, here we go. I'll take the base unit with the module board on it, add it here, put that there, and then I have a second bag, I got a red and a blue little topper for it, let's untie this cable first, and we will screw on the top here if I can get it threaded. There we go, okay. Doesn't seem to tighten down, it seems to keep turning once it hits that bottom, but it's on there, good. Okay, so now I have the board with the button already on it and the USB cable. Let's go ahead and take the wire that's already hooked up to the joystick here, and I will plug that into the joystick pins here. Now again, when I was looking at the uh, pinout, there's other buttons here that are for joystick, um, there was an up, down, left, right, but I'm assuming that uh, this board is just designed so it can work with different types of joysticks. This joystick only seems to have one set of pin outputs on it, which go straight through this ribbon cable to here, so I'm thinking that's all I have to do. So let's go ahead and hook this up, back up to the computer, run the calibration again, and see if it detects the, uh, the joystick movements. Okay, here we go, running the same calibration test. Uh, with the same board, have the same button, but also the joystick hooked up now. We'll run that, and oh yeah, it's definitely uh, seeing changing in numbers there. Let's go ahead and let it finish doing that. So now, oh yeah, so let me scroll the camera down here. It says move axis to zero minimum position and press any key. But you can see as I move it, so I move it on the one axis, so depending on which way I'm holding the joystick, I'll hold it this way. When I push it to the left, that number goes to zero. When it's centered, it's 127. And if I go to the right, it's 255. Now, people have to realize that arcade controllers are very different than many uh, game controllers for computers in that it's not pressure sensitive in that, that um, it doesn't matter how light or how soft I move this joystick, it's either on or off. So I'm going to move it to the left, and it's on to the left. If I go to the right, it's on to the right. 
Uh, there's no moving it halfway. But that's how old arcade games were in old Nintendo games and stuff like that. It wasn't move it a little bit and it moves a little bit. So, you know, this would be horrible for a flight simulator. Um, but fine for your old arcade games that you'd probably be emulating. So, it is definitely detecting it. So, there we go. Uh, so, I've only hooked up one button and the joystick, but it's easy enough to hook up the rest of the buttons. Um, but I know that the board at least is working, and at least the, the joystick and one of the buttons is working. So, uh, in a future video, I'll be sure to hook this up the rest of the way and give it a go, a test in some emulators and some other games. So, I thank you for watching, and um, I hope you're enjoying these videos. If you are, be sure to check out my other videos. Check out my website, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should be a link in the description. There you can search through all my videos from both my channels. This channel is primarily a hardware video where we talk about things like this and a lot about microcontrollers and creating your own devices. And my other channel is mainly software based. I know this video sometimes hardware hardware is kind of useless, uh, electronic hardware without software. So here, you know, we looked a little bit at software, but just running commands, not actually writing anything out. But if you enjoy these tutorials, these videos, this one wasn't really a tutorial, an overview. Um, go ahead and check that out. Again, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris the K. There should be a link in the description. If you do like my videos and you watch them regularly and you want to become a supporter, be sure to check out my Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash mailx1000. There's a link to that in the description as well. Now, if you can't support me financially but you like my videos, be sure to like, share, subscribe, comment. All that stuff helps. The more viewers, the better. The more you interact with me, the better. So, thanks again for watching, and as always, I hope that you have a great day.